about the science of wear. What is the science of wear? It's true, earlier this year, Esri went through a rebranding. But the science of wear has always been at the core of what we do and of what you do every day. Wear is a dimension of virtually every science. And for decades, we have been applying GIS to biology, to ecology, to economics, and to social sciences of various types. From building smarter cities, to preparing for natural disasters, from implementing retail location strategies, to mitigating crime, from utility planning, to wildlife conservation, you have been applying the science of wear to make important decisions and solve problems that shape our future and make our world a better place. The science of wear is the combination of advanced geographic science and powerful geospatial technologies. So simply put, the science of wear is the science of geography and the technology of GIS. And what an exciting time for technology. Our world is undergoing a massive digital transformation in which everything is automated, monitored, measured, and recorded, and ultimately connected through the vast network that is the Internet of Things. The science of where provides us with a fundamental language that transforms how we think, understand, and communicate in this new digital world. And it also provides us with a framework and a process for turning all of that data into information and information into actionable decisions. We can manage and integrate floods of data from various sources. We can employ powerful visualization techniques to map and explore our data. And we can analyze and model our data to uncover trends, relationships, and patterns in both space and in time. We can plan, design, and make predictions. We can make informed decisions that ultimately lead to real action, creating a more sustainable future. GIS provides us with the platform, the platform for integrating data from various sources, the platform for leveraging powerful distributed computing infrastructures, and the platform for real scientific innovation and advanced analytics. Now more than ever, ArcGIS is a true analytics platform. We have been working on tools to make geoprocessing and spatial analysis faster and scale out to hundreds of thousands or millions or hundreds of millions or even billions of observations. One of the innovations that I'm most excited about is geoanalytics. At the 10.5 release of ArcGIS, we introduced Geoanalytics Server, which integrates disparate data sources and uses the power of distributed computing to process large volumes of data in minutes or hours instead of days or weeks. And the best part is, I can do all of this from within my own familiar desktop environment. Centerpoint Energy in Houston, Texas has data coming in regularly, stored as a series of CSV files. I have over 250 of those files stored on my big data file share. They represent close to 54 million power outages over an 18-month period. Now, this is a lot of great data, but it's kind of hard to make any sense out of it. How can I use this data to make a decision? How can I assess where my problem areas are? How do I know where to allocate my resources? What we're looking at here is just a 1% sample of that data set and even then, it's a bit of a mess. 
So to begin making sense of this data, I'd like to aggregate these points so that we can visualize them in a more meaningful way. So I'll point to my big data file share that's located on my portal. And I'll point to the power outages. And I'll give this a name. And I would like to aggregate these into hexagon bins that are two kilometers wide. And in addition to counting how many power outages occurred in each bin, I also want to get some basic statistics about the length of the outages. So I'll sum the total outage minutes, and I'll also ca calculate the average amount of time that each outage lasted. Finally, I'll set a projection, and I will run the tool. Now, with traditional desktop tools, 54 million points would take a pretty long time to process. But you may have noticed, I'm actually running a geoanalytics tool. Geoanalytics tools look and behave just like any other geoprocessing tool, except for that I can point to the data on my big data file store, and they run on the geoanalytics server. Now I have to admit that as an analyst, I used to be a little intimidated by working with big data. It always seemed so awkward and unmanageable, and I felt like it required a level of server and database knowledge that was beyond my expertise. But I promise you, it's not rocket science. So while this tool finishes running, I'll explain what I mean. Geoanalytics server is a part of the platform. So once your enterprise is set up and your big data file store is registered, working with big data from within Pro is seamless. Through Pro, I can access and visualize, visualize many types of data from my big data store. I can use the power of distributed computing to analyze data of many shapes and sizes. And I can view and share those results through my portal. The platform also makes it easy to integrate my real-time data that's constantly being collected through the Internet of Things with GeoEvent Server, so that I can harness the power of GeoAnalytics to run timely analysis on my data as it's coming in. Being able to interact with live and interconnected data sets and distribute computation all through my own familiar desktop environment has opened me up to a whole new and exciting world of analysis possibilities. Because really, collecting and storing data is just the first step. Spatial analysis is how we apply the science of where to ask questions, solve problems, and make smart decisions. Spatial analysis can be categorized into six main groups. Understanding where, which is about putting the world in context. This includes geocoding your data, putting it on a map, and symbolizing it in ways that can help you visualize and understand your data. So where are my customers located? Where are my delivery trucks? Measuring size, shape, and distribution shows how large an object is, or it describes it in terms of its area, perimeter, length, or volume. It also helps us understand the spatial distribution of multiple features. How long is the pipeline? How tall is the building? How large are the service areas? Determining how places are related quantifies proximity, coincidence, intersection, overlap, visibility, and accessibility. How many people live in the flood zone? Where is the center of the disease outbreak? We can find the best locations and paths using site suitability or network analysis. Where is the best location to open a new store? What is the most efficient delivery route? Detecting and quantifying patterns can be used to find hotspots and outliers, identify natural data clusters, 
or analyze changes in patterns over time? Where do we see increasing clusters of crime? Where are the hotspots of cancer deaths? And lastly, spatial analysis can use powerful modeling techniques to make predictions and explore what-if scenarios. How will a forest fire spread based on vegetation and wind? How will store size and travel distance attract or detract customers? From computational analysis of geographic patterns to finding optimum routes, site selection, and advanced predictive modeling, spatial analysis is at the very heart of the ArcGIS platform. All right, so coming back to our analysis, we see that it completed successfully. And taking a look here, we see that we finished running at 10.26, so just a few minutes ago, in three minutes and six seconds. That's 54 million points that I just aggregated live in about three minutes. So now that this data is aggregated, I can begin to visualize it in a more meaningful way. So taking a look here at our outages. We can apply some symbology to explore this data. So now we have a much better understanding of where we have higher and lower numbers of outages. And we can also look at some of those summary variables about the length of the outage durations. So taking a look here, we can change the symbology. And let's take a look at those uh, summed outage minutes. So here from our, okay, we'll use graduated colors. And we'll switch from count to summed outage minutes. So looking at the counts, it follows, that pattern follows pretty closely with population density, which you might expect. And looking at the summed outage minutes, we see a pretty similar pattern where the places experiencing the, to the most total minutes are kind of in the more densely populated areas around Houston. We can also take a look at the, length, the average length of outage durations. So taking a look at the average outage durations, once these draw here. This one reveals a bit of a different pattern. So we'll actually see that the places that are, are experiencing the longest outages are actually in the more rural and suburban areas around Houston. So this is all really valuable information that CenterPoint could use to prioritize improvements to their service levels. Now, in addition to aggregating, summarizing, and visualizing this data, I can also use geoanalytics to run sophisticated analysis tools like hotspot analysis. I use geoanalytics server to run a hotspot analysis on the 42 million momentary outages in the city looking for clusters in, in space. Momentary outages are brief outages, uh, like a, but usually caused by vegetation, like a tree brushing up against a power line and tripping a breaker. So see, here we see a hot spot in the middle of Houston. Let's take a closer look at that hot spot. To understand this pattern in more detail and take advantage of the temporal aspect of this 18 months of data, I used geoanalytics to aggregate this data in both space and time using the Create Space Time Cube tool. And I created this cube in about five minutes, aggregating this data in both space and time. So now, just looking at this raw cube, we can begin to see some fluctuations in space and time. And with the data aggregated, I can now use other powerful desktop analysis tools, like emerging hotspot analysis, which generates a cluster analysis in both space and in time. 
And it also further boils down the pattern so that we can begin to reveal trends. Like these two locations that were hot for the very first time in 18 months, alerting us so that we can act quickly and focus our resources effectively. So these are just a couple examples of using GeoAnalytics Server to extend the power of desktop analytics, making it possible for you to apply the science of where everywhere. Thank you. <laughs>